The 2000 NBA draft may be one of the worst NBA drafts of all time. With this past 2024 NBA draft, it got me thinking about some of the worst drafts of all time. Went back, saw a ton of articles and people saying that the 2000 NBA draft was one of the worst of all time so I decided to look into it in this video and see how bad this class really was and if there's any good players in this draft that actually made it a decent one and possibly not the worst of all time and looking into this 2000 draft it is pretty bad so let's take a look at this draft picture here that does show a good amount of the first round picks in this one just right off the bat, a lot of these guys I do not even recognize. So starting on the left here, I have no idea who that is. Then we got Jamal Crawford, who is undoubtedly one of the best players from this class. Multiple time, six man, averaged a good amount of points throughout his career. And, and was one of the best six man, honestly, of all time. One of the top scorers and ball handlers in the league for over a decade. So definitely a really good player. Then I believe this is Morris Peterson. I remember having a good career with the Raptors, but I don't think he was ever even close to an all-star level. Then we got Mike Miller, definitely a solid career. I don't think ever made an all-star. This guy, I honestly have no idea who that is. Is it Hilton Armstrong, maybe? He kind of looks like a coach in this picture. For some reason, he just looks a lot older than everyone else. Then we got Kenyon Martin here, who was the first pick in the draft, and then I have no idea who this guy is. This guy is looking insane here. Don't know who this is. I believe this is Marcus Pfizer. Then we got Quinn Richardson and Darius Miles, followed here by Mateen Cleaves. I think this is Joel Presbilla, Chris Mim. I don't know who this is. And then Stroh Miles Swift, who was the second pick in the draft. So let's come over to basketball reference. Look at this draft. So at the top, they did have Kenyon Martin, played 15 years in the league, followed by Stroh Miles Swift, only played nine years less than 550 games. Then we had Darius Miles, who I thought had a better career than this, only played seven years in the league, but I think he was honestly pretty good in the league. Then we got Marcus Pfizer, played just six years. I do remember that name. And then Mike Miller had a really nice career, like we said. DeMar Johnson, I remember that name as well, but just seven years in the league, never did anything. Chris Mim played a lot of years on the Lakers. Then we got Jamal Crawford here. I think one of the best players in this draft class. I think right now I'm putting him at number two. And spoiler alert, we haven't come up on the number one player in the draft yet. Then there is Joel Prisbilla. Keon Dooling, I remember, he played a lot of years in the league. And Jamal Crawford played 20 years in the league. Did not know it was that many. Remember some guys like Eton Thomas, Courtney Alexander, who only played three years in the NBA, which is very surprising. And then Mateen Cleves was definitely a big bust. Here's another diamond in the rough here. Hito Turkoglu had some great years with Sacramento and Orlando. I believe went to a finals with Orlando. Desmond Mason, so... Quinn Richardson, a good amount of decent role players in this draft, but just no stars, really. We get down to Morris Peterson, Deshaun Stevenson, Mark Madsen coming in to the second round. Some standout second round picks. Eddie House had a good, nice career. Probably won some championships with the Miami Heat. Nahara as well for Dallas Mavericks, if you remember him. But the absolute steal and best pick of the draft was Michael Red. With the 43rd overall pick in the draft, only played 12 years in the league. I thought he would have had a longer career than that, but definitely the best pick here. Some insight here from this Bleacher Report article. The year 2000 combined for just three all-star appearances, and weirdly enough, it all came in 2004. Michael Red, Kenyon Martin, and Jamal McGlure, who I just completely skipped over. I forgot how good Jamal McGlure was. Would be interesting to look at his stats. McGlure averaged 7.2 points for his career and six and a half boards. He must have had one really good year where he was an all-star, and he actually wasn't. It was 13.6 points a game and 10 boards. I don't know how he was an all-star, and that was his best season ever. But regardless, I guess he was an all-star. And was he picked over LeBron James as a rookie to be an all-star? Which is actually pretty insane. Also surprising that Michael Red was only a one-time all-star. But Michael Red also was an all-NBA performer. And people forget how good Michael Red was. I mean, all three-point shooters are kind of ahead of their time when they were playing in the early 2000s. I'm sure he would have been really good in the NBA now because he is a sharpshooter, but also a playmaker. So... 2002-2003 shot 44% from three. Was actually got some MVP votes in 2004 when he was an all-star. Put up 22 points per game. Somehow 
in 2006, averaging 25, 2007, averaging 26, did not make an all-star team while shooting around 40% from three. Some insane seasons here. I mean, 27 points a game and you're shooting nearly 40% from three and you're not an all-star. I mean, pretty surprising. The Bucks must have been really bad. Michael Red, I think, had a great career. Then we get Kenyon Martin here. So one-time all-star, 12 points per game for his career as the first overall pick. Also, didn't have as many standout seasons as I thought. His career high for points per game was 16.7. Thought he would be closer to 20 points per game. I do remember him with the Nets. I believe they went to a finals or two with Kenyon Martin, with you know, with Jason Kidd, those kind of teams. So played on some good teams. I remember him being good on the Nuggets as well. And he played in the league for a long time until he was 37. But just, yeah, never really had all-star caliber seasons. Even in his all-star season, 16.7 points, 9.5 boards. Shooting under 50% from the field when I'm sure almost all of his shots were under the basket. So I thought Kenny Martin was a better player than his stats do show. Then looking at Jamal Crawford, three times six-man Average almost 15 points for his career. I'm sure some seasons, I guess just one season over 20 points per game. But, you know, well into his 30s as a 33-year-old averaging 18.6 points. Definitely a great player. Played in the league till he was 39. So I think the second best player would be Jamal Crawford after Michael Red, then Kenyon Martin. I think what really separates this class from others is the lack of stars in this class. Michael Red. Like I said, I thought he was a bigger star than it turned out he was, which is one all-star appearance, but had some really good seasons. And then I did think Kenny Martin was better than he was as well. And I thought Darius Miles played more than seven years in the league and was more productive than he was, but definitely some good role players. So overall, this draft looks really bad if you're just looking at star players and players who turned out to be stars. But as far as overall depth, a ton of players had... Some pretty good, solid careers in this draft. And this draft had one of the biggest steals getting Michael Red, 43rd overall, who was the Milwaukee Bucks' best player for like a decade and made an all-NBA team. So this picture is insane of some of the top picks from this draft. And just at first glance, you think, okay, Jamal Crawford was the best player in this draft, but then you got to look at Michael Red and some other guys that had some nice careers, Mike Miller. Kenyon Martin, Quinn Richardson, and Darius Miles, and then guys like Jamal McGlure, Keto Turkoglu, Morris Peterson. I'm sure I'm forgetting a lot of other guys that we mentioned in this video had solid careers. So overall, as far as star power, not great at all. As far as overall quality players, I think pretty decent. And this past draft in 2024, I think we could see more of the same possibly more star power coming out of that class because I do think that Reed Shepard is pretty solid from what we've seen in Summer League and some other guys I do think have all-star potential and could be really good down the line. But first, make sure to subscribe to the free NBA newsletter that I write. Talk about more current news and stuff on the newsletter and my opinions on it. So definitely check it out for free. It'll be linked down below and the pinned comment. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some others on the channel, putting out a ton of NBA content now to go watch some of the other videos where I dig into stuff like this in the NBA. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Sub to the channel and we'll see you guys in another one.